tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. All about nutrition from your favorite dietitian. Everything you need to digest in your mind. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Tips, tips, tips with Tony. Making you healthier one bite at a time. With Tony. With Tony. Hello and welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, a registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. Right now, I am video conferencing with the amazing Matt and Perry. They are the founders and creators of Fit Story TV, and they are going to tell you all about what they do, but I'm really, really excited for you guys to get to know them. I was recently on their podcast, and they're just two genuine great guys that are really trying to make a difference in this world, so I'm excited to have them here. So welcome, Matt and Perry. Appreciate Thank you. you. Yeah, thanks for the intro. And uh, yeah, we had, we had a blast when you came on, Tony. It was super fun when you came on Fit Story TV. So I'm looking forward to throwing down here today. Yeah, and you guys were going to give you an opportunity at the end. He'll uh, let you know where you can find them. But yeah, they have a podcast. It's called Fit Story TV, and they have other information in there. So we'll, we'll get to that. But before we do, I always start by asking you to introduce yourself share about who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. So whoever wants to kind of go first, and then maybe you guys can end with how you guys ended up doing something together. Cool. Do we go first, Matt? Yeah, go for it. Oh, maybe, we, maybe we might need to actually say, it is now Perry talking. It is now Matt talking. <laughs> <laughs> the amazing accents. I think, honestly, you guys, we could just talk about nothing and people would still find this fascinating. <laughs> you are, you are, I actually do have a lot of international listeners. I don't really think about it. I'm I like, actually, it. they're probably like, no, this sounds like me. And, and meanwhile, you're probably like, I have the big accent. <laughs> Bro, should, should I just grab the diary and start just reciting words? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine. We'll start from A and go all the way to Z. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So, Perry, why don't you go first? Sure thing. So, I, um, as you guys know, name is Perry Power. I, uh, from London in the United Kingdom. And uh, my story kind of goes, I, I had a great upbringing. I was brought up by my dad. My biological mother, she walked out when I was four years old, which left my dad to raise me. And he did a fine job at that. And uh, I was actually the best man at my dad's wedding, which is pretty cool. I don't know many people who are like aged, I think like eight years old, who is the best man. That is the- amazing. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. I mean, I was shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give the rings over and everything, a little boy like that. Um, and then, um, yeah, so he married my stepmom. And then when I was 10 years old, for over a year, I was sexually abused by my granddad. Oh, and yeah. it came to the age of, I was 11, stroking on to 12. And my stepmom actually saw the the tail end of what was happening between me and my granddad and she told my dad about it and then he put a stop to it didn't and putting a stop to it means he didn't let me go around then he quote unquote dealt with it even though to this day i didn't actually know what yeah. or how he dealt with it um but uh, he told me not to speak out about it he goes i don't want people knowing uh the power family as being something riddled with sexual abuse so he goes don't talk about it right keep it behind closed doors and going throughout school, obviously, you wouldn't talk about it. And kids don't really go to school and just talk to their mates, you know, about being sexually abused. Not really something you do, obviously. But as, as the years went on, I, um, without knowing, it shaped who I was. It created this false hood of identity uh, where I was showing up in the world, not as my authentic self. And that, that came to fruition in how I acted towards people, my, my self-confidence, who was looking back at me in the mirror, who I I didn't really recognize for many, many years. Um, and then I, because I'm an actor, so I've been acting since the age of six, I think I was. Um, it's in the family as well. And when I left college, I was like, right, I want to pursue the acting career, but I'm tired of doing call center jobs. I'm tired of doing working behind the bar. So I need to do something that can help finance my acting career. And fitness came up out of nowhere. So, right, I want to go and be a PT. So I became a, a PT and it was a tough gig. I'll tell you that much. It was a bloody tough gig trying to build an in-person PT business. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a gym with 8,000 members. So you think, bloody hell, it's 8,000 members in there with 10 PTs. Pretty sure you can get clients. But at the time, I had no idea how to get clients. Mm. Same reason for why people can't get clients with a billion people on Facebook. Right? Exactly. Same reason. <laughs> exactly, right? And um, I was like, okay, so I'm this struggling in-person PT. And then completely out of nowhere, June the 1st, 2017, I get a call to say that my dad um, has just had a heart attack and he's just mm-hmm. passed away. And that was, it was a huge shocker because you go to the cinema, you watch movies, you may know of people whose parent has died, but, and it's an emotional thing to hear, but you never know what it actually feels like until you go through it. Right. And it, and it kind of makes you realize that you're actually not invincible and shit can happen to you. Mm-hmm. And um, I went through a grieving process for maybe about six or seven months and I actually left the, the gym and I just became a recluse in my own home, barely left the house. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, right, I need to get back on, back on board. So I moved online and, um, and I created something called the Fit Parent Movement to help parents not go down the same road that my dad went down because he became an alcoholic, he became a diabetic, he wasn't eating properly, he never went to the gym, his mindset was really bad. Um, and then I used the Fit Parent Movement as a way to help the young Perry out there mm-hmm. to help that young Perry out there still have a dad before the age of 50 and the dad can be at that guy's wedding. You know, like my dad's never going to be at my wedding, but I was like, I don't want another Perry out there to go through the same thing. So I built up the fit parent movement when a multiple podcast, um, I had um, a news channel that was, um, uh, had my interview on it and it just kind of blew up from me sharing my story online because I'm, I then felt right to be in a place to talk about my sexual abuse online because I knew that my dad was keeping a secret. I ended up finding out actually that my dad was also sexually abused by the same man when he was younger right. and he never spoke out about it. And obviously he lived with shame and guilt from, for his whole life because he put his son in the arms of the same person that abused him. And um, I am fortunate enough now to pass that on to my kids to give them the confidence and the vulnerability and the permission to share their story whenever they feel like it's the right time as well. And then, um, then the, the, um, um, the fit story company came, came into light once I met Matt, but I'll let Matt share his story and then we can kind of talk about that as well. So, yeah. So for, well, Matt, yes, we are going to get to you, but Perry, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing that. That was very powerful. I really, really appreciate you being open and honest. And I think we definitely need to highlight the fact that, you know, one thing that your father the advice he gave you, which it sound, it's great that you didn't listen, was to keep quiet. And unfortunately, it sounds like he may have used food and alcohol as a way to kind of suppress his feelings of what he was going through. And because you use fitness and health and you use a different, more powerful outlet, you were able to break that cycle, that very, very terrible cycle. And like you said, not, not only are you doing this for your future family, but you're, you are influencing, you are influencing so many other, like literally Perry's out there that could have easily passed the same things down to their kids or use, you know, the outlets that it could have kept them stuck, but you've pushed past it. Like, so I just want you to know you're, that is incredible. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And just thank you for being you because that is really, really, um, powerful. So thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I realized um, once sharing my story that sexual abuse a lot of the time um, is in the family and it's passed down, i.e. you always, not always, but a lot of the time you'll have somebody who is a sexual abuser and they sexually abuse multiple people within the family through generations. So it's passed through, right? Unless, it's put a, unless a stop has been put to it and that cycle has been Trump, and it's the same way as um, holding on to your story and living with that shame and guilt. That also can pass. If you can't manage those emotions, it gets attached to your cells mm-hmm. and you pass those emotions on to your kids. And without knowing that your kid has those same emotions that you were um, lived through life with, and then that cycle is going to continue. It's going to continue right. unless and you put a stop to it as well. Wow. Wow. Very powerful. Thank you very much, Perry. That's all right. Mm. All right. So, yeah. So, Matt, I know that you have your own story as well. Um, I probably should have kind of made a little preface before we went into this. But one thing I love about you guys is just how vulnerable and honest and open you are. And I really try to encourage my my followers and my listeners to do that because I think disclosure is disarming. And that's the only that's the tip point before we can actually heal and grow and, you know, stretch and help and influence and inspire. So, 
um, yeah, so I just wanted to, I pro- should probably say that because I know, Matt, you have a kind of a, a pretty big story as well. So, um, yeah, guys, I hope you guys are, are learning a lot from this. But go ahead, Matt, introduce yourself, please. You know, what's really cool is I, I hear Perry's story all the time, like very regularly. I, I hear, you know, we're, we're on podcasts together a lot. Right. We talk about it. Uh, inside our community, he, he talks about it a lot. Even before we were in business together, again, that's how I was introduced to Perry was through his vulnerability and him leading with his story. Yeah. Um, so I've heard it so many times, but it still is, is it's still as powerful as the first time that I mm-hmm. heard it. You know, from a spectator point of view, and um, I think that a lot of people that may be listening to this who maybe have, you know, a, a, they know they have a story. You know you, know, you know you have some trauma maybe attached to your story that maybe you haven't worked through. I can honestly say after experiencing the self-healing that I got from sharing my story and obviously the, the self-healing that Perry has had over the years from sharing his, I can honestly say that sharing your story is the beginning of the transformation that you need to take place. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times people, uh, especially let's relate this to like weight loss or, or getting healthy, right? A lot of people are searching for a system or a strategy. So, you know, how can I, you know, make, you know get my macros calculated or, you know, what's the perfect workout or what's, what's, you know, what, what is this that I need to be doing over here? But a lot of the times, the reason why we can't show up and just utilize those strategies and system is because there's an underlying issue. There's something personally that's going on internally that we haven't worked through and shifted and it's manifesting and showing up in our lives in different ways. Mm-hmm. And, and I honestly believe that when you own your narrative, you, you share your story, you, you put your face into an, a vulnerable state and you share your story, I believe that's where the shift takes place initially. It's kind of like helping you just move the needle in the right direction. And if you don't do it, you continue to hold the trauma and you continue to keep it a secret or whatever it is. Like in my case, it just manifests in the same way. It will manifest negative things and negative emotions and, you know, a negative attitude, you know? So I think that even what we're talking about already just around you know, really being vulnerable and sharing your story and owning it is pretty applicable to, well, it's very applicable to anybody in any place in life, anywhere. Yeah, that so true. And I'm, I'm assuming it sounds like, I mean, Fit Story is such a great name because it's literally, that's, it sounds like that's where this came from. Like that's where you realize is that when you are open and you share your story and you use positive outlets that you can influence and make change. So I, it makes sense why you created Fit Story. Um, so, but before we talk more about that, Matt, just tell us more about kind of who you are and kind of what you went through and, and why you're here today and why you do what you do today. Yeah, for sure. Uh, be, be, be honored to. So again, I've shared this story so many times. It's almost like a movie script. Sometimes, I, you know, there's a, there's a saying that if you share, when you share your story for the first time, it's really uncomfortable. It's you doing it. But by the time the 30th time you shared your story, it now seems like you're just telling a story, you know, mm-hmm. it's a, a movie that you're watching. Uh, and that's generally how it feels for me. Sometimes I've shared this story so many times now, you know, um, but I mean, going back, cause I'm 30 years old now, I just turned 30 in January. And, um, yeah. And, uh, and my, my, my life to this point, honestly, I, there was a long period of time where I never thought I'd make it here. And I don't just say that to sound cool or edgy. I, I genuinely believed for a certain period of time in my life that it was headed for one of two places, either prison or death. Mm. Like, that's what I believed that my life was going to end up. I was either going to get caught for, taking to, for, for selling drugs and I was going to do time in prison or I was going to do too many drugs and end up dead. Mm. But before all of that, the reason why that even existed in my life is exactly what I was just saying around how these traumas show up in our lives and, and they manifest in our lives. You know, I, I wasn't born into drugs and drink and partying. I wasn't born into that, right? Yes, when I was born, I, was gr- I grew up in a very dysfunctional family. My family today is still pretty dysfunctional by our standards. Um, but it's ours, you know, it's our dysfunction. <laughs> Uh, um, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. But if I go back to when I was, you know, sort of first brought up, it, it wasn't dysfunctional. You know, if we argued a lot as a family, like more than the, more than the norm, I would say. Yeah. Um, anytime Christmases or birthdays or any event would come around, it was 
a really a, a negative because we'd always be arguing. So, you know, it'd be like passing presents over on Christmas Day resentfully because you've just had an argument with that person, you know, 24 hours before. Um, but the reason why my family had, had, was like that for such a long time actually connects and relates to a lot of what Perry said about abuse being passed down through generations. So I obviously wouldn't share this unless my mum had already shared it and other family members had already mentioned it, but sexual abuse was rife in my family. It was mm -hmm. it passed down. And I think that that actually created a lot of the trauma that then manifested and showed up in the way we communicated with each other and the way that we operated as a family unit. I think that it all comes back to, you know, the sexual abuse and the traumas that people had. So we grew up in council estates, um, mainly I don't remember much before I was 10 years old. I would genuinely have to grab out a photo album and I'd have to flick mm -hmm. through and that would be what jogs my memory. Because at 10 years old, um, just as a, a young boy, my eldest brother, he went out one night and he murdered someone. And this, I remember the following day, my other brother, who's older than me, but not the oldest, middle one, he came round to my mum's in the morning and he knocked on the door and I remember him walking in and uh, he was crying. Wow. And I'm like, what? That's like the first time I've ever seen him cry. Like I'd never seen him cry before. You know, my brother's, um, uh, you know, an alpha. He's an alpha male. We never used to cry. Yeah. Like, wow, that's powerful. He's, like, he's crying. My mum then tells me to go into the other room and what my brother proceeded to tell her was that he, he, he knows that our other brother had murdered somebody that night. Uh, he'd gone out with a, a, a friend, if you can even <laughs> use that term. I use it very loosely, a friend. <laughs> yeah. um, and they had beaten somebody's face in with a weight bar until it was unrecognisable and just murdered them. And, yeah. And um, honestly, like, it's not like in the movies. Like, in the movies, when these things happen, a lot of the focus is on victims. It's on the victim's family. It's on the victim. And it all gets placed there. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that what pursued for us was just a fucking nightmare. I'm mm -hmm. sorry to swear, but like, it, it's as poor as I could possibly be. Um, after the event, my mum marched us to the police station. She literally grabbed me. She grabbed my sister, my brother, and she took us to the police station and we went and handed him in. So we, we had to sit in front of the police officers and we had to say, we know it was him. Uh, he's probably still got the murder weapon and this is where you can find him. Wow. We turned him in. Now, at that point, we, we were known in our area, I should say. Our last name was known. We as a family were known. Mm -hmm. And in that type of environment where it's very violent anyway and, and destructive and, you know, uh, negative, because that's the, the type of estate we grew up in, it wasn't like we were perfect, right? It wasn't like we were saints. Yeah, we, we, we were products of our environment. So, you know, my brother going and doing that, was just like some of the other people in the area that had murdered people. It was like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh my God, you know, it's violent. yeah, it wasn't like, yeah. oh my God, someone's being kicked in now outside the shop. It was like, oh, there's another person being kicked and punched outside the shop again. So it wasn't like it was, it was, it wasn't like it was, if you saw it today on the street, you know, it was just normal. It was kind of the, the done thing. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, we, we obviously went back home and, my mum had actually gone to the, sh the shop in the morning. She took me over to the shop and our names had already been released in the newspaper. So as soon as my brother had been caught, um, the family name was already in the newspaper, literally the f within probably 48 hours of the event. And that's where everything started to take a real um, a a twist, I would say. Uh, we ended up with people wanting to harm us. If we were seen in the street, people would call us murderers. Uh, and for the, fir for the first two weeks after the event, we had to literally be locked in our own house. I had to be pulled out of school. I couldn't go to school anymore um, because the, the, the retaliation was just too heavy. So we'd have windows being, you know, bricks being thrown at windows. Uh, they tried to set fire to the front of the house at one point. Um, booting in the doors and it reached a point where the police had to actually install panic buttons and I don't know if you've ever seen them in movies or anything but they come and install these little boxes in the house which basically means if anything you know really bad happens you press the button and within three minutes the police are there 
And we had to deploy that button twice in those two weeks, like where things are, you know, people almost foot through the door, doors nearly coming down and they're ready to come in and, you know, take an eye for an eye, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 10 years old, Tony, experiencing some of those things made my life infinitely harder. I, you know, look back now and I'm like, I wish for that dysfunction, you know, I wish that I'd still be arguing over the table <laughs> the day before Christmas, you know, because that is not a problem in the grand scheme. And um, just one to skip a few, really. We spent, uh, I spent a good year out of school completely because we couldn't be relocated straight away. So we were spent, spent a lot of time in bed and breakfasts, in hostels, mm -hmm. um, but generally trying to be relocated. And eventually, about a year down the line, we were relocated. We were given a, a house and we were moved in. And at this point, you know, 11, 12 years old, um, with this huge, huge secret. Nobody knew where we moved to because we had been picked up, moved to a new location. Even if someone who was from the old area were to ask me for my name and they didn't know me by face, they wouldn't know because we also had our names changed. Mm. So I say this was an event that literally changed our lives. I mean, it literally changed our lives. My last name is not my last name I was born with. It's, it's, right. a, it's a made up name. Right. It's one that we needed to use. And for, I would say the next, I would say for nearly the next 10 years, I held on to that secret, like, and it manifested in certain ways. It, I ended up being a drug addict. I ended up selling drugs. I ended up partying a lot. I ended up fighting a lot and doing a lot of things that were very reminiscent of what my brother used to do. Mm -hmm. However, at the time, I wasn't able to see that story that I was creating was because I didn't believe like I, des I deserved a good life. Like, you know, my brother's murdered someone. He's taken someone's life. So how do I, why do I deserve to live? Mm -hmm. Why do I deserve good things if that person had that taken away from them? Mm -hmm. And there was always these underlying issues, these underlying, um, you know, parameters that I created. And it, it made me act out in certain ways. And I mean, again, just to kind of like move the story forward to, to, to the point where I'm at today is it took me a lot to try and work through that stuff. Um, and it, and it never really did, you know, and at one point faced with the, the realization, I guess, of prison or death, when you have one of those moments, an aha moment where you're like, Oh wow. Like mm -hmm. this is actually real. I could end up here and, or I could be, I, I could be here. And at that point, like I said, I never saw a third outcome. I didn't see oh but i you know i may get a job and live a normal life it was literally like i'm going to end up in prison or death dead mm -hmm. so that was really a big aha moment for me and i started to change my life radically i started to change things around me so the first thing that i'd done i actually remember i deleted all of the 300 contacts i had in my phone at the time i deleted everybody's number second to that i moved area i li i literally got up at the end of one month after being paid from a job that i was doing put all of my money into a deposit for a flat and I moved. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I just did everything I possibly could to kind of like move myself away from it. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, over the years since then, I, you know, it obviously paid off. Like I've, I've invested a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of patience. I've, I've invested so much energy and focus and all these things into changing my narrative into creating a new life for myself mm -hmm. that otherwise would never have happened if I wasn't aware that I could even do that in the first place. So, you know, eventually again, one, two, skip a few, we pull up to the point where me and Perry are in business together now and we created something that really speaks to us. It's authentic to us, you know, to, to earn money from doing something that you don't love, but earn lots of money. What, what, what's, where's that going to get you? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But doing something that you truly love, that you feel like you're called for, um, that you feel like is, is doing good for the world and the people in it. Um, that's all we could ask. And when I first met Perry, Perry was the first person that introduced me, I guess, in essence, to sharing my story. Mm. Because at that point, I still had not shared it. 18 years later, Tony, I had not shared a single word publicly about my story. Mm. 18 years. And then um, in April 20, 2018, which weirdly enough is the anniversary month of the crime as well, which wasn't intentional at all. It literally wow. just fell on that time, you know? Wow. And uh, April 
So yeah, I know April 2018, um, I shared my story for the first time ever on social media and my life just changed. I feel like it was the internal shift, like I said at the beginning of this podcast. It was yeah. self-healing that took place after all of those years of trying coping mechanisms like drugs and alcohol and party and fighting and all of that stuff. I was finally able to just fully let go of that and just start to live authentically. Like This is me. I am the boy whose brother murdered someone. Mm. I used to spend, I spent years in my life trying to move away from that, you know, move away from this idea that I was the boy whose brother murdered someone. But to be honest, I'm proud of that today. I'm proud to be that because if I fucking wasn't, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here right now. Mm. I wouldn't have experienced those things, those lessons. It's taught me so much going through that stuff, facing those challenges, fighting Goliath over and over again. Like that has taught me things that, are invaluable i couldn't buy with money today so yeah. there you go we, we made it to the point where we created something where we could bring our passions together which is you know story and fitness fitness yeah. is an act for us and it always has been since um coming away from drugs for myself and i know for perry it was the thing that gave him freedom to pursue acting so you see how it all ties in together for what we're doing mm-hmm. yeah wow okay that that was really I mean, it's no surprise that you guys somehow found each other because you both went through something that was very unique to yourself, a lot of trauma that needed a lot of healing. Um, You both had the strength to do it, and then you you used fitness as part of that as an outlet. So I think that there's definitely no surprise that you've met each other. I do want to just circle back a little bit to Matt. I think we just need to highlight the fact that, like, the one thing I think that was a really profound moment for you was – seeing the other way right so like you said it was either jail or death but then at some point you're like but wait maybe i could actually start over and start new and just that one spark actually is what kind of helped you then think of how right so you have to believe you can first before you can create the how and then you literally were you went all in and you knew what you needed you knew that if you kept yourself in an environment where there was people that were going to tempt you with drugs you would stay stuck there so you literally did everything you can to change to make it easier for you it doesn't make you weak to say that you can't like that's like i think about people who like say like they can't leave um sweets in the house and not to down the severity of what you went through but just like if you can't leave sweets in the house then they feel like they're they're weak it's like no for now maybe we just don't leave the sweets in the house so we can like focus on getting you like healthy again and like changing your relationship with food right hello i am interrupting this podcast for a brief announcement and special offer just for you did you know that april is ibs awareness month well if you're someone who struggles with ibs then listen up because i have a special offer just for you Oligos IBS Restore has been clinically proven to nutritionally manage all types of irritable bowel syndrome, including constipation, diarrhea, and a mixture of both. Those who use this medical food have expressed relieved symptoms such as less bloating, less diarrhea, less constipation, more having more normal bowel movements, and 48% of users reported an improved overall quality of life, including an increase in energy, decrease in irritability, and just an overall better mood. It comes in a powdered form, and you can put it in your water, in your smoothie in the morning, in your hot or cold cereal. It doesn't have any flavor, and it also doesn't have any coloring. So you won't even notice that it's there, other than feeling much better after having it over a certain period of time. It doesn't contain gluten, preservatives, GMOs, or soy, and it's free from anything artificial like flavorings, sweeteners, and colorings. This is not like your typical probiotic. It actually contains prebiotics. And the difference is, is that prebiotics are probiotic promoters, meaning that they help fuel the good bacteria that's already in your gut rather than bringing in some sort of good bacteria that hasn't been there before. So unlike probiotics, which add foreign bacteria to your body, prebiotics work with your body's own good bacteria. Simply put, They are working by selectively nourishing and stimulating the growth of your own good bacteria, activating them to thrive and outperform the bad bacteria. So if you want to give Alios Restore a try, go to alios.com or the link in the show notes. 
And don't forget to use discount code TIPS30 at checkout to get 30% off your order. So I think that, that those are really Yeah, really 100%. Interesting. But this is the thing, isn't it, about being bought into a story. You know, for, for like, so I'm writing a book at the moment. It's a slow process, but I'm writing my book and it's called My Bullshit Story. And the, and the, the whole point behind this book is to kind of, you know, just tell people, you know, that if I can, if I can become an author and, and, a, and a best-selling author with that book, that is proof in the pudding that you can literally create the fucking story that you want. Like, why you don't have to say in the bullshit story. So for people that, you know, maybe, you know, maybe overweight, um, may ha- may have an ailment or, or something like that that's related to their nutrition or their fitness. And the story that you sell yourself internally may be one of, you know, I d- firstly, we'll start with the morning. I'm not a morning person. Mm. Well, the very fact that you are saying you're not a morning person tells me that you probably are never going to wake up early enough to start working on your dreams. Right? It's prob- it tells me that you're not going to wake up early enough to dedicate an hour to, to meditate before your kids and family get up, right? Which means that you're not going to work towards dreams. So it, 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 for me, I, I, I look at it that way. I'm like, we get to create the story we want to live in, but most people are, are, are stuck in the wrong story. So then if we take this as, as gospel for a second, how do we then change the story? Well, you change the story by changing the story. You've got to first change what it is that you're telling yourself about where it is that you're going mm-hmm. and what it is you want. So if you want to lose 30 pounds, then you have to really truly authentically connect with that goal and that vision and then, and then do the fucking work every day that's going to get you edging closer to it. Don't not, you know, if, if that means waking up an hour earlier because you don't have time to meal prep in the afternoon because your kids don't blame your kids for being in the way of you and your goals, like get up an hour earlier, yeah. change the story by you waking up now an hour earlier. Guess what? You've gained six, seven hours a week back, seven hours. Yeah. And if your job, if your boss turned around to you one day and said, Hey, Tony, you know what? Um, I know that you're working for me, but here's, here's seven hours pay for nothing. You'd be like, yeah. <laughs> or so take, seven out, take seven hours off this week. You'd be like, yeah, come on. But you can do that anyway. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? I just, yeah. just change the story. Change the, yeah, changing the way you, you talk to yourself. And also, too, I mean, the, like, at the end of the day, there's, there's plenty of moms and parents that are fit and healthy, right? There's plenty of people that work 70 hours a week that are still able to reach their goals. So really, if you recognize, like, every, and everyone, too, like, I mean, you know, what you guys went through is, like, se- se- serious trauma that, you know, hopefully not everybody listening has been through something like that. But at some level, we've all been through something, right? We all have our own story and we can choose to let that hold us back or we can choose to make it make us be stronger, be proud of it, know that that's what shaped us to who we are and now we can help other people. So um, it's really, really clear that you guys have like this amazing mission, this amazing, amazing message. Um, so maybe tell us a little bit more about like what fit story actually is, who it is that you help. Um, because believe it or not, I know like most of my listeners, not all, like most of my, some of my listeners are nutrition coaches or registered dietitians or in the fitness industry. So I feel like they would really learn a lot from what you guys are doing. So I think if you could maybe, and also inspiring entrepreneurs also listen to the podcast. So I feel like if you could like let us know a little bit more about what you do, I think a lot of people will, will learn a lot or be inspired by it. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think that, you know, when we started fit story, the vision has expanded so, so much since when we started and it's only been, I mean, we've been in business for coming up 12 months, you know, and, um, it's expanded so much. Um, When we started, the whole thing for us was uh, originally was what the big vision is now, which is weird. We didn't pursue it that way, but the Mm -hmm. big vision when we started was we were like, right, we are going to make fit story and the fit story way of life the normal thing that people do. Mm -hmm. Because look, we live in an abundance era of information. If if you're stuck trying to lose 30 pounds, you're stuck trying to get a client, it's not information you need more of because we already have a lot of it and you still got no client. Right? <laughs> so 
if, if it's more information you're looking for, then you may as well shoot yourself in the head now because you don't, there's like, you don't need more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, when we started, we were like, what we would like people to do is adopt the fit story way of living. In other words, becoming the narrator of your own story, owning your story, the traumas, the pain, the emotional pain, the mental pain, physical pain, spiritual pain, like whatever it is, the owning everything that's happened in your life. And, and, and from that point forward, like we were talking about taking ownership and becoming the narrator of the new story that you want to live. Mm-hmm. So if that is, for example, struggling to get clients in my online fitness business, well, you don't, you needn't be. You, you, what you need to start doing is figuring out a way to sell yourself a better story, one of abundance, of prosperity, of love, of happiness, of connection, of joy, of all of those things, instead of selling yourself the story of no leads coming in, no money in my bank, struggling this month, blah, blah, blah. Because the more time and energy and focus that you give to those thoughts, the more they're going to manifest and show up in the real world. Mm-hmm. So the very fact that, you, you know, we have a client come to us who then says, I can't get clients. I can't, I can't earn money. I can't do this. The fact that you entertain those thoughts as opposed to entertain any infinite number of other thoughts that you could, that could actually help you is all based on your story. So when we started this out, our whole goal, our whole vision was about helping people in the everyday life become the narrators of their story. They don't need another macro split. They don't need another training program. They don't need all that information. They need to become the narrators of their story. They Mm -hmm. need to start living out an authentic fit story, one that is of health and love and all those things I mentioned. However, I will be honest, what, how long did we make it, bro? I don't know, like four months, three months in, (laughs) three months in, we were like already, and it's hands up, transparency, the doubt started to creep in, paradigms started to to take control. Mm -hmm. And it was, and it was saying that, you know, people, what people aren't going to do that. Yeah, people, and we had all these negative thoughts creep in, and eventually it led us down the path of realizing that maybe that's actually a good thing because it made us look at it made us get resourceful, look at what we could do to sort of move the needle instead of just focus on this big whole vision thing. What could we do now? And that's what led us into the fitness coaching space because I've been a coach before, fitness business, uh, sorry, a business coach before, and so is Perry. He's helped people with their story, and we were like, how can we combine that? but for the fitness professional, how can we bring this together in a way that is helpful for the online coach, the offline personal trainer, et cetera? How, what can we do? So we created a marketing framework for fitness coaches, people like yourself, where they can implement the fit story formula. Now the fit story formula is a very specific as a proven formula of how to craft your story, your personal fit story, which is you have one, Tony, you came in our show, right? Yeah. Um, how you can craft that and articulate it in a way that pulls your ideal client to you like a magnet. Because for most of us as fitness coaches, dietitians, whatever it is, we want to help our old self somewhere where we were stuck yeah. in the process. If I can help that person, then I feel fulfilled, right? If I can stop the, you know, the old, per, the old version of me that was stuck trying to figure this out. If I can give them the solution, Hey, do you know what? Amazing. That, that makes me feel fulfilled as a coach. So what we realized is that this marketing framework we ran with, um, it's now become a fully blown business. And now what we're doing with fit story is we, we, again, we supply fitness coaches, online trainers, personal trainers with the tools to be able to create and share their fit story with their audience in a way that propels their brand forward and brings them what they, what they want, be that lead sales or the personal shift that comes internally from doing it. Right. Awesome. Very, very awesome. And the podcast, was that first or was the business first and the podcast second? The fit story podcast. Uh, repeat that again. Cause just, you, you just cut out um, the fit story TV podcast, like the actual podcast was that first and the business was second or was the business first and the podcast was second. No, the, the business came first. The business came first. The vision came first. Um, the podcast came. How long actually? What after was it? The podcast. Podcast. Podcast started in November. Oh, we did start first. Yeah, we stopped it. Didn't we? Yeah. Um, podcast started at pro- as a podcast platform in November, but before yeah. that, uh, Perry's dead on. Yeah, we we started with a YouTube channel um, because at that point we were honestly in the space where we wanted to start working towards the bigger vision again, mm-hmm. and we were. Like, 
okay, so now we know we've got this marketing framework down, this is working. How can we then start to do things that move the needle toward the bigger vision? You know, right. the average on Jane out there, how can we help them? So we were looking at ways we could do it. And of course, getting fitness coaches onto our podcast um, as authorities in the market, you know, authorities in their niche and allowing them to, or giving them the space rather to own their vulnerability and to lead with their story means that when that's shared with their audience, with our audience and with whoever else it's shared with, um, people are able to then connect with, the, with that person. Mm-hmm. They're able to truly connect with them. And it may be that one of our guests coming on our show who shares their story, it may be that all that guest, all that person on the other end of the podcast needs to hear is one thing and it can help them shift their narrative. Totally. And if we, we could do that, then it means that we are making an impact. So our brand vision is to live in a world where your story matters. Mm-hmm. We really do feel like people devalue their story a lot. You know, I did for many years. I devalued it. In fact, it's become the bit, my adversity has become my biggest asset. Mm-hmm. Same with Perry. Mm-hmm. His biggest adversity has become his biggest asset. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we kind of start to, to, to look at it. We were like, let's pursue this route of going to fitness coaches and fitness business mentors, getting them to share their story. That will then bleed through to the mark to the to the average Joe and Jane market, the people out there that you know, need to hear these stories and ultimately that's going to move things forward. So the podcast is actually nothing to do with generating revenue, nothing to do with piggybacking off of guests' names and all of the shit that happens in the industry with that. It was like, how can we get in front of more people and create a world where your story matters? How can we do that? And the podcast being the early adopters of this platform, because I'm sure, you know, podcast is still very new in the greater scheme of things, Mm -hmm. um, became early adopters of a platform that enabled us to share our stories and other people's stories and ultimately start creating a world where your story matters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you think about all the things that you guys are doing, it is really, you are authentically doing what it is that you want others to do. And I think that's the reason why your business is so successful because you're following what you're meant to be doing. And because you have that purpose, it keeps going, it keeps you moving. Um, and it's keeping you away from all the things that you could have, your life could have been, which was complete, the complete opposite direction. So awesome. All right. Well, I want to be mindful of both of your times. Is there anything else you feel like we didn't talk about that you kind of want to add to kind of close up, button up um, before we kind of tell the listeners where they can find you? Um, the only thing I, I kind of want to add to this is we were talking about it a bit before, um, but just to quickly circle back to it um, in regards to the average Joe and Jane and fit story is that, if we very, and I think that a lot of listeners on here would be able to relate to this, is that if we go back a couple of years and we look at my dad before he passed away, the the couple of years, the whole span of a couple of years before he passed away, if and we did, those people did say to him, "You should go into Weight Watchers, right? Mm-hmm. You should go and get a PT. You should go and join a gym. You should go and they will try and provide solutions to his problem, which I know is is." Uh, you know, a lot of, especially men, like to do this. That is how we're wired, right? To always find a solution to a problem. Give logic. <laughs> Give logic. Yeah, Give exactly. logic. Just Give logic. logic. No, no cuddles. Just logic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're saying these things to him. And the reason why the only thing he actually did was go to AA meetings for alcohol, but he only lasted one meeting. And this it made me really realise in regards to fit story why it's so powerful. Why there is a place in the world for it is because. A lot of people, when they're on a journey, they're not searching for Weight Watchers. They know it exists. If they really want to do it, they get, they'll go and do it. Totally. Right? Mm-hmm. They'll, go it. they'll go and join a gym. They'll go and find a piece. It's not this hidden thing that, that, that they didn't know about. They, they know it exists. Why they're not doing it is because they're not in a place to do it right now because that is not the, the solution right there and then to their problem. Mm-hmm. The solution that they need is look within themselves because they're the only ones that can get themselves out of that rut. So mm-hmm. what becomes the solution then to that problem that is giving them permission and giving them access and the tools and whatever else, the, the, the camaraderie, right. And uh, the permission to dive into their own story so they can pull themselves out of that rut. And that is where fit story comes in. And that's where we want to take it to help people who don't necessarily want to join a gym because they're not in a position to do it. They just want to become uh, the, the, the owner and the narrative of their own story. Because looking back, 
if my dad knew that he that there was something that existed in this world where he could become the the the, the narrator of, of his own story and stop his alcohol abuse and stop everything else that comes within it he would still be here today and those are the people out there they would want to try and help with this story mm, thank you for that and i really appreciate that and i don't think there are enough people out there that are even recognizing that. I think that's a really, really good point. It's like, obviously, if this person wanted to change or believe change was possible, they would be doing that. But right now, they're just stuck. They're stuck. And so to, to tell them to do something is not going to be helpful, but rather to give them the, the power, the tools to feel like it's okay or this space to open up is actually what's going to help them to move, move the needle a little bit. So, wow, this has been absolutely amazing. Thank you guys so much. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. Please let the listeners know where they can find you, connect with you, uh, message you and continue to follow your content. Cause it's really awesome. Sure. Thank you. And, and appreciate you uh, giving us the space again to come and be able to share the stories because, um, Again, if we want to live in a in a world where your story matters, then we better uh, we better leave, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so, where to find us? To be honest, we still my mind blows my mind when I say this, but we we are the only company in the world that do what we do. There isn't another fit story company or a company like it. What we've created is something that was just a thought once and is now in reality, but doesn't exist anywhere else, right? So, you should be able to find us. Just by typing in Fit Story Community on Facebook, if you are a fitness coach, a fitness business coach, um, a dietitian, someone within the health and wellness industry, then I would suggest definitely come in and see what we do in the community. We've created a really safe space. Tony's inside our community as well. We've created a really safe space for people to be able to come and even if it's just shared a little bit of their story for the first time somewhere. You know what? Doing that on your personal profile is scary as hell. So, like, we can yeah. see why you may not want to do that. Right. But if you come to our community, we provide just a safe space for you to be able to just vent that part of your story up. And you know what? That might help you tremendously in business. You might go from not having any leads and sales to sharing a story, and then all of a sudden, bam, you're, you're hitting these leads and sales are coming in. Um, it may sound like nonsense coming out of my mouth, but I promise you, working with the clients that we have, it's, we've seen it happen. We've seen people move through internal barriers and blockers and go on to, to, to do incredibly well in business. But we haven't given them a system or a strategy to do so. We haven't given them an extra lead gentle. We've li- literally just given them the space to be able to own their story. So that would be the first place. Um, and then also Instagram. Um, I don't know about you, Tony, but how active are you on Insta? I've kind of, I'm pretty active. Yeah, see, I, I fell, fell off tail end of 20 <laughs> 2019 I did uh, and I've made a commitment to myself and I'm making a, a, a secondary public declaration right now I'm going to try and get back active on Instagram as well you can find me at, uh, at Matthew.Burbridge and you can find Perry Power at I am Perry Power it would be wouldn't it? Of course and, <laughs> and then um, at least it's not like the official Perry Power you know, that oh, what's wrong with that? Well, you know when people just put the official at the beginning there? It makes you sound bigger than you are. Right? I know, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> um, so, uh, but you can also find Fit Story Company on Facebook. You can follow our page, and which isn't overly active, but we are making more commitment on there. And also Fit Story Company on Instagram. So any of those places, you can pretty much find us. And uh, yeah, it'd be great to connect with anyone that can connect with any of the stuff we've spoken about today. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You've been absolutely wonderful. Guys, definitely follow them, listen to their podcast, join their Facebook community. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, thank you so much for listening. If you're not already subscribed to the Tips with Tony podcast, please subscribe. A new episode comes out every Monday and every Wednesday. As always, this is Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. <laughs>